Percentages are important concepts you'll need for the Praxis Score math exam. This quick video will review some of the ways to solve percentage questions to help you study. First, let's take a closer look at the word percent. What does percent literally mean? There are two Latin roots that can give us a hint. First is per, we know what that means. The second root is cent, which means 100. That may remind you of the word century. So in Latin, percent literally means per 100. How does this apply to a percentage? Let's say there are 35 bus riders out of 100 students at your school. There are three numeric ways to write this number. The first, and usually the easiest to solve, is through a fraction. I take the relevant number, which is our 35 bus riders, and put that over our total number, which is 100 students. That read out loud is 35 hundredths. Another way I could write 35 hundredths is through a decimal. To calculate a fraction into a decimal, I simply divide the top number by the bottom number. When I type that in the calculator, I get the answer of 0 0.35. Both of these numbers are read as 35 hundredths and have the exact same value. The third way I can write 35 out of 100 numerically is of course through a percentage. The way to convert a decimal to percentage is easy. We have the decimal here and we jump two place values to the right and that will always get us our percentage. Another way you could think of that as multiplying the decimal by 100. Both give you the solid answer of 35. Then we can just add the percentage sign after it. So all three of these have the same value and express the same thing. Sometimes questions ask for the fraction, sometimes they ask for the percentage. It depends on the individual question. In this case, this was very easy to calculate because the total was 100 but the totals are not always going to be a perfect symmetrical number. Let's take a look at one of those examples where the number is a little uneven. A class of 28 took a test. Seven students got an A on the test. What percentage of the class received an A? So I'm gonna follow the exact same steps again. First, I wanna create a fraction. I'm going to take the number of students I'm trying to look for, which is the number of students that received an A, which is seven. I'll put that on the top. And I need to put the total number of students on the bottom. And the problem says there were 28 in that class. So seven 28 received an A on their test. So that could be an answer choice, but the question is specifically asking for the percentage, so I must continue. To convert my fraction into a decimal, I'm gonna take my calculator and divide seven by 28. The calculator gives me an answer of 0 0.25. Lastly, I need to convert the decimal into a percentage. I will jump two places to the right or multiply it by 100, whichever is quicker. When I jump two places to the right, I get the whole number 25, and then I can add a percentage. So what percentage of the class received an A? 25%. That is how you calculate percentage. Sometimes the test wants you to calculate the percent rate of change which sounds a little complicated, but we're really just adding one extra step to this process. Let's have a look. Your class's state test scores averaged at 52 in the fall and 63 in the spring. What is the percent increase? So we're not given a black and white 
formula as we were in the other problem, but we're only adding one additional step. We're still gonna follow the same process. First, we need to find the fraction. And this is where the additional step will take place. We don't have the exact number that we need to put on this top here, which is why over here, we have the formula for percent change. We find the difference between the new and the old and divide it by the old number. So let's plug our numbers in and see how that works. We have our new score of 63 and we need to subtract our old score and put that over the old score. When we do 63 minus 52 in the calculator, we receive an answer of 11 over 52. This right here is going to be the fraction that I will write. Now we can continue on like normal. Now that I have my fraction, I need to convert it to a decimal. So I'll type in my calculator, 11 divided by 52. When I do that, I receive the answer of 0 0.211. Finally, I need to convert the decimal into a percentage because that's what the problem asked for. So I'll take the decimal and I'm only gonna jump two places to the right. Even though there are three numbers, I only jump twice. If we remember percent is talking about per 100. If we kept moving this decimal, we would get to the thousandths place value. And we don't need to worry about the thousandths, just the one hundredths because we're talking about percentages. So when we jump the decimal twice, we get to 21.1%. 21.1% is our final answer to this problem. That's how you would calculate percent increase. Decrease will work the same way. It'll be the same process. Let's look at how a question might be worded on the test and what portions of this process we might have to use on a real exam question. A store owner buys 100 textbooks for $15 per book. If she marks up each book by 9% and sells all books, what is her profit? The first thing I think I need to notice is mark up. If she's marking up each book, that means she's increasing the price because as a store owner, she does need to make a profit. So I wanna find the price per book that she's increasing. So we have 15 to start with, that's how much she bought it for. And of course she's gonna increase the price by 9%. So to calculate how much that price went up, we're gonna to have to multiply 15 by 9%. One problem you'll run into is the Praxis calculator that is provided to you on the exam does not have a percentage symbol. So we'll need to take 9%, we have 9% down here, we're gonna to have to convert it backwards into a decimal. And it will be the exact same process as before, we're just doing it backwards. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna jump two places to the left. One, two. We'll have to put a zero in as our placeholder. And that means our new number is decimal zero nine. And we should add a zero to the beginning as well. So now that we have our decimal, we can properly type this into the calculator, 15 times 0 0.09 or nine hundredths. When I type that in the calculator, I get the answer of 1.35 or one and 35 hundredths. This is how much she's gaining per book. That is her profit per book. Now she's not just selling one textbook, she's selling 100. So I'll need to multiply one and 35 hundredths times 100 to figure out how much she made out of for all of the textbooks. So when I type in, 1.35 times 100, I get the answer of $135, which is answer choice A. Different percentage questions will require different portions of our three conversions that we've been using. Knowing all three different conversions are useful and different portions will be used in different scenarios.